By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to The Dark. It is Tuesday and that means more matches from The Dark Constructed Tournament. This is match number four for me so far. I've won two, lost one match. This is my fourth match. If I want to make a chance of getting through to that top eight, I really, really need to win this match. And um, just if you haven't seen any of the matches yet, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the dark playlist. And there you can see all the other matches and also get more info about the tournament. For tournament info, by the way, you can also check the description below. There you will find tournament information. You will find a link to the tournament website. Um, and just, just a lot more about this format if you want to know more and if you want to find out how you can join Timmy Talks tournaments, there's info about that as well. Okay, enough said about that. Let's focus on this game. So I'm playing against an opponent. His name is Peter. And Peter is, I guess you should say Peter and not Peter. Peter is the Dutch pronunciation. Peter, I guess, is more of the American English style. So I'm playing against Peter. Um, and Peter is bringing blue and red to the table. And guess what? My deck is also blue and red. So it's kind of a mirror match, but we have made some different choices, which is quite interesting. I have deck photos of both of the decks. So in a moment, I'm going to start looking at both the decks, do a little bit of deck tech on them and showing you what you can expect in this matchup. Now, if you want to go straight to the action, I know some of you do, you can check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you right to the start of this match into the action. For now, I'm going to start with the deck deck and I'm actually going to start with the deck deck of my opponent. Let's take a look at the deck of Peter. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Peter, and um, he is playing red and blue, just like me, but there are some differences. Maybe let's first look at the similarities. So he's playing Dance of Many, I'm playing Dance of Many. He's playing Bull Lightning, he's playing Ghost Ship, He's playing Electric Eel, um, he's playing two sis uh, four Sisters of the Flame where I'm playing two, and he's playing two Fire Drakes where I'm playing four. So that kind of, that part of the deck is the same. I think what we both would like to pull off is Dance of Many on a Ball Lightning and then simply deal 12 damage in one turn, right? So that is interesting. But in a way his deck is more aggressive. It's more aggressive in the sense that he's playing Mind Bomb and he's playing Goblin Rock Sled. And I think Goblin Rock Sled actually is going to be pretty good in this matchup. It's a 3-1 with Trample for Red and 1. So those are pretty good stats for old school, especially for this The Dark format. And it can only attack if your opponent has a Mountain. But guess what? He, guess what? He's playing against me and I'm playing with Red. So he will be able to just drop 3 power in turn 2 and then he can start dealing damage with it the very next turn. So I think... This card is quite powerful and it's also a pretty strong blocker. Remember, both of these colors in the dark, they don't have first strike. So that's not something for Peter to worry about. What he should worry about, though, is my Brothers of Fire. Obviously, Goblin Rockslet is, is very vulnerable with that one toughness to Brothers of Fire. But if I cannot get my Brothers of Fire on the board, um, you know, I can really see Goblin Rockslet doing some work. What's interesting here is that um, he's got a lot of mana ramping going on and maybe he wants to use that mana ramp. I mean, look at that. He's got four Felwer Stones and four Sisters of the Flame. So that's huge. And there are no X spells in this deck. There are hardly any X spells in general in uh, the dark. So it's not that surprising. But still, if you ramp, you would think, what do you want to ramp to? And when I'm looking at this deck, I see, I guess he wants to ramp to kind of win the tempo game, maybe to drop his ghost ship a turn early, uh, you know, maybe to get Bull Lightning, er, well, not early, but just to get the three red, because of course he's playing two colors. So he wants to make sure that when he has a Bull Lightning in hand, he's able to play it in turn three, I guess. Um, and then he's playing um, with the War Machines. So they're quite cool. They're, I believe, seven to cast. It's a four, four creature from the dark. And what's really good about it, it has regeneration. And that's going to make it really, really difficult for a lot of players to take care of it. But he's a little bit out of luck here because he's playing against me and I'm playing with Fishers. We also see two Fishers main for my opponent. And Fisher, of course, says Buried Target Creature, which means that he cannot regenerate it. So that works great 
against his Diabolic War Machine and great against his Ghost Ship. Looking at his regeneration force with the Diabolic War Machine and the Ghost Ships, I kind of would have expected an Inferno main board, also because of the mana ramp. Um, he doesn't have that, so that's an interesting choice. Another interesting choice here, I think, are the four Mind Bombs. So four Mind Bombs. Mind Bomb is one blue to cast, and it basically deals three damage to each player, so also to the person who casts it. And you see it in, in usually in Suicide Blue lists. It's a very interesting card. It's kind of the blue lightning bolt, but it's blue, so it has to be difficult, you know? So it says deals three damage to everybody, but you can discard a card to prevent that one damage. So you could basically just discard three cards, take no damage, but that does mean that you're down three cards. So in a lot of scenarios, your opponent will just say, you know what, I'm just taking the damage and I guess that's exactly what Peter wants. He wants the opponent to take the damage and then even maybe finish the game off with a couple of Bull Lightnings or that Bull Lightning Dance of Many trick that I love to do as well. So that could definitely be a strategy. Um, another card that I'm kind of surprised of that he's not playing here is Eternal Flame. Now, I'm also not playing with Eternal Flame. And looking back at it, I think I definitely should have played with Eternal Flame at least one. And in my humble opinion, I think this deck could really use an Eternal Flame as well. On the, I, I know you're playing two colors, so it's not like a mono red. In a mono red deck, Eternal Flame is even better. But I think in this build, it's 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 also good. You know, it's, it's also gonna work. So uh, that's my opinion. Another interesting thing here is that I'm a little bit more on the flyer side. I'm playing four Fire Drake and four Ghost Ship. And you can see here, and I, I think it's a sensible decision from Peter. He's decided to cut two Fire Drakes instead I guess he put in two Diabolic War Machines. And I think when you have so much ramp going on in your deck, two Diabolic War Machines make sense. They make perfect sense. So yeah, I, I think the thing is when you're playing against a deck like this, just like my deck, um, if, if if Peter draws the right cards and he's able to, to draw into some Bull Lightnings, he's able to copy them with Dance of Many, I could definitely lose against this deck. It's going to be an interesting, an interesting mirror match. Um, maybe one last card here to highlight is uh, Blood Moon. Blood Moon, interesting choice. One red and two to cast, and it makes every non-basic land into a mountain. Now, that's pretty good with Goblin Rock Slide, right? That's really funny synergy. It's also really good when your opponent has a maze. You play the Blood Moon, the maze turns into a mountain, and then you can play your Bull Lightning and you know get in on the action. What's important to know here is that Mace of If in this format has been restricted. So Blood Moon cannot do the amount of work that it would usually do when you're playing another old school format because there are not that many uh, special lands. You've got Safe Haven, of course, uh, you've got City of Shadows, and you've got De uh, Maze of If, but that's it. So you've got a Maze of If that's restricted, and you've got those other two lands that I think most people will not play a lot of. Maybe one Safe Haven or one City of Shadows, also depending what you want to do with it. For example, I want to put my Bull Lightning in my Safe Haven, so I'm just playing with, with the one-off. Uh, I know that some players in this tournament, we've seen that before, are playing with Preacher and City of Shadows, so they will be you know, playing some non-basic lands. But in general, to play a Blood Moon main board is really an interesting choice. And maybe, Peter, if you're listening to this, maybe you can let me know how that has been for you in this tournament. Do you feel like it has been worth it to play a Blood Moon main, or do you feel like, eh, I could have played it side. It wasn't that useful all the time. I'm, I'm really curious, because maybe I'm underestimating Blood Moon here. Maybe it was more useful than I think it is in this particular format, because Blood Moon is a great card, but in the dark, only constructed, I think it's a bit limited, and I personally would play it sideboard. But, I I mean, who am I? I haven't tested this deck. I haven't played this. Actually, I'm going to play against this deck now, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe you're going to gonna kill me because you've Blood Mooned and change my Maze of If into a mountain and you're just gonna stamp all over me with your Bull Lightnings. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's very likely to happen, actually. Okay, this is the deck of Peter. Uh, now let's quickly take a glance at my deck that you've probably already seen. So just a really mini, mini deck deck uh, on my deck. Let's go, let's take a look at my deck, a Ghost Family. And here we are looking at my deck, the Ghost Family. So this is the deck that I'm playing with this entire tournament. Of course, you pick one deck, you play with it. Um, if you want to uh, see an extensive deck deck on this, if you haven't seen that already, you can take a look at the first episode of the Dark Series. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on there and that will take you to the first episode where I'm playing with this deck. And in the deck deck section, I kind of give an extensive, you know, ins and outs. What do I want to do with this deck? Just really quickly to recap, it is a blue and red deck, 
There are a couple of themes in here. Flyers is a big one, you know, four ghost ships, four fire drakes. That's really a big one. I've got some kind of tap down component with, you know, tangle kelp and barrels cage. I've got some removal going on um, with the Fisher. So I, I think it can be a very efficient deck. And then I kind of wanna, wanna give the final blow of my deck by playing Dance of Many over Bull Lightning and just like dealing, bam, you know, 12 damage in one go. I've got an Inferno kind of as a safety switch if everything's going south. Um, and then I'm playing two Brothers of Fire and two Sisters of the Flame. The Sisters of the Flame, just because, you know, it's such a mana hungry format. So I felt like having an extra red to you know, be able to play Bull Lightning at the right times could be very efficient. Um, I'm also playing two Flower Stones. This is my match number four, so I've, I, I have some insights now on what I would change in this deck. I think I would take out the Inferno, maybe add an extra Amnesia, because that card has been so good. And I would definitely play with four Brothers of Fire main in this, the dark form, and only why, because there are so many 1-1 one, one little creatures. There's so many 2-2 two, two creatures. And Brothers of Fire is just amazing. You know, you kill a creature of your opponent and all you pay for it really is life. The Brothers of Fire is still there. So it's card advantage. And in a format where card draw is so difficult, it's really a great control component. Um, unfortunately, I would take out the Electric Eels. I'm not going to do... You know, I would never really do that just because of the flavor. I love the art of Anson Maddox. I love the fact it's got a red mana symbol on it and it's, it's played in a blue and red, the dark deck. So I really think this is the home for that card. But my deck is more controlling than it is aggressive. You know, even with the Bull Lightning, usually I wait for the right moment to cast my Bull Lightning. It's, it's not just an auto thing like, oh, I'm just going to smash the Bull Lightning on the table and hit my opponent. So this is when you look at the deck you might be surprised at me saying this but this is actually more a control deck than it is an aggro deck and uh, being a more of a control deck i think electric eel cannot really shine in this but i have to play it because it's a beautiful card it just really fits the blue and red theme you know so i don't regret playing it but after playing a few matches i can see some differences another card that i think i should have played is a flood instead of barrels cage i don't know what i was thinking when i made that decision oh i i know what i was thinking when i made the decision i really like the idea of tangle kelp and barrels cage but flood is just way more powerful especially in a format where you cannot get rid of enchantments remember that it's like there's no there's no disenchant here it's the dark only <laughs> if you got if you got an enchantment it's there to stay unless i don't know you do something weird or make a mistake and just I don't, there's just no way to destroy it Anyway, this is my deck. Again, if you want to see the extensive deck deck, go back to episode number one. There I really share all the crazy ins and outs because there's there are some crazy plans with this deck. Maybe you're going to see that in this match. Who knows? Talking about that, let's go to the action. Let's go to game one. Game number one here. Peter sitting on the left. I'm sitting on the right, starting with a basic island. There we see a basic mountain. And it looks like there's a one drop. And there, oh, that's interesting. Goblins of the Flark. I thought it was in his sideboard. Maybe the deck picture is not accurate with what he's actually playing. Uh, I'm playing my second mountain here. No two drop for me, no Felwer Stone. Just passing turn here. And attacking now for one. I'm going to drop here to 19. And what else can he do? Maybe Goblins of the Flark? No Goblins of the Flark. Passing turn. Tapping three and. There is a Sisters of the Flame. Okay, that's pretty good. I can maybe ramp into something. Of course, Brothers of Fire would have been better with this board. I could take care of the Goblins of the Flark next turn. But at least this kind of stops him from attacking. Although, um, now that I think about it, Goblins of the Flark actually has Mountain Walk. Looks like... What is he going to do there? Oh, there we see a Blood Moon. So we talked about that Blood Moon in the deck deck, so he's not attacking with the Goblins of the Flark. Interesting, attacking here, he's gonna go down to 18. Maybe he doesn't see the Mountain Walk and there is a Ghost Ship. So it looks like I'm kind of taking over this game one now, just with showing more muscle. It's really important now for Peter to come with something here in turn number four. So maybe he can also play a Ghost Ship, that would really help. He's a little bit into tank here. And I guess, I guess he doesn't have it or else he would have played it out, of course. There's another mountain. If it can find a bull lightning here, that would just be ideal. I could deal so much damage. 
Okay, Dance of Many on the Ghost Ship. And I don't know why I'm attacking here with my Dance of Many that has Summoning Sickness. Uh, why am I doing this? Playing a Felwer Stone? Okay, this is kind of weird. I don't know why I'm attacking with my Dance of Many. So, I'm sorry here, Peter. So, you're taking two damage too much here. Maybe we, we can correct that later on. So, there is a Mind Bomb. And I guess this Mind Bomb is almost going to do hurt Peter more than it is going to hurt me. I'm going to go down here, taking the left, going to go down to 16. He's going to drop to 11, paying for my Dance of Many. That was just weird. I, I think I did it because I'm so used to playing it on the Bull Lightning, but it's just weird. It's so funny looking back at these games, and sometimes you, you, you do these obvious things that are just wrong. There is a Brothers of Fire. Like, am I tapping a safe haven now to put to play my Brothers of Fire? Oh, of course, because of the Blood Moon. Okay, that's not a, that's not a mistake. That's not a mistake. Okay, because I'm kind of like doubting everything I do right now. Um, anyway, Peter's on five, it seems. I don't think that one attack matters that much for the game, but it's kind of weird. And now we're kind of discussing the Brothers of Fire. And I think Peter really needs a miracle here to still win this game number one. Um, yeah, no, that's that's not going to work. Oh, look at that. Three ball lightning. Couldn't get that third mountain in. Maybe that would have changed the game somewhat. So this was a really quick game number one. So we're going to dive into our sideboards and we'll catch up back up with you in game number two. Game number two. And let's hope we get more of a real game here. You know, game one just went by so fast peter couldn't find that third mountain to really you know play play his bow lightnings and really do something to influence the board so um let's hope that we get some more excitement here in uh, in game number two so of course it's uh, then peter i guess on the play since he lost let's look at our starting seven and oh, it looks like i'm taking a mulligan here and I, I do think taking mulligans is a little bit more easy when you're on the draw right you kind of know okay my opponent just lost he's probably going to start so i'm just going to take a mulligan here and assume i'm going to be on the draw but it's it's not something you like to do because remember it's really hard to draw cards in this format i think the only the only thing that you can do here is play book of Ras, um, which is six to cast it's an artifact two mana to pay and, and pay two life to draw a card um so yeah that's i guess i i guess some decks play it with dark card of the wood but um but i'm not playing it i i think it's 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 not not it's too expensive in my deck there we see a month's goblin raiders from peter turn one and a basic island for my turn one and oh there's also a two drop with a flower stone so a little bit of ramping here now i'm okay i guess i am gonna play a mountain i wanted to say am i gonna play a mountain because i'm kind of now giving him a mountain too if he can find a third mountain and play a bull lightning he can deal like a lot of damage in this turn i guess he's not because he's attacked already with the mons goblin raiders i'm on 18 or sorry with uh goblins of the flark of course i'm on 18 here playing another island so is he stuck again not finding a third mountain just like in the first game that would be kind of rough at least he's having quite a bit, quite a good start here with that fire drake as well so he's got some pressure on the board and this is not great my second blue i, I would have preferred finding a second red maybe playing brothers of fire or sisters of the flame and instead i'm kind of forced to slow him down here playing a tangle kelp which is an enchant creature from the dark and when uh, the creature that you target becomes tapped and it doesn't untap if it attacked a turn before that and every time when it attacks, it doesn't untap the next upkeep. So it kind of slows your opponent down where they can only attack every other turn. Um, it's quite it's quite a nice card. I kind of like it. I think it could even be useful in some uh, regular old school decks. Let me know in the comments below what you think of, of Tangle Kelp and the usefulness of Tangle Kelp. Here we see an attack of Goblins of the Flark and the Fire Drake dealing two damage here. Going to go down to 16. And there is the Sisters of the Flame. So just a lot of... A lot of smaller creatures here hitting the board on the side of Peter, which is pretty good. I need something big here to block. And yeah, there's a ghost ship. This is this is ideal for me because I'm really I've really just stopped his attack right now. He can still attack with the goblins of the flark because it has mountain walk. 
But the other two creatures, they're just kind of, you know, stuck now. And of course, the Fire Drake doesn't even untap because of that Tangle Kelp. He attacked last turn with it, so now it doesn't untap. He has to wait a whole other turn before he can use it again. And three. Oh, Bull Lightning. That is pretty good. Bull Lightning here. Aye, aye, aye. Going to 10. And this is interesting. He's not attacking with Goblins of the Flark. I think we saw this in game one. I think he doesn't realize that the card is Mountain Walk. I think. I'm not sure. Maybe he has other reasons why he's not attacking with it. Um, there's another mountain. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, sometimes you watch his videos and you probably see really basic mistakes. Like in game one where I attacked with a creature. Like, oh, here we see Dance of Many with my Dance of Many ghost ship token. Which, of course, had still summoning sickness. I would really advise everybody. Well, not, but if you're interested in looking at the game on a deeper level, especially your own game, to just record some of your matches and, and look back at it. Because you'll be surprised how many things go wrong in a game. And it does help. The more you record, I mean, I'm still making silly mistakes, but the less mistakes you make. And also the better, you know, the better of a magic player you you, you get, which is not necessarily the goal or anything. But, you, you know, you, you want to play the game the way it's supposed to be played, I guess. Uh, here we see another Sisters of the Flame. And another Goblin Rock Slide. I think his hand is now empty. And I mean, look at his board. It's full of creatures. The problem is the creatures are just so small and so tiny. Um, then again, he's kind of holding uh, holding my, at least a few of my creatures I have to hold back to block, right? But yeah, it's, it's just all too tiny. I'm still on 10. It's looking kind of good for me. I can I can maybe swing in with two creatures next turn. Although I think I'll probably keep two two creatures on blocking duty and just swing in with the single ghost ship. And I think he's now looking at the board thinking, is it worth it to attack? Yes or no. I think at this point I wouldn't attack. Maybe next next turn do an all-out attack. Of course. Um, maybe wait as well for the Sister of the Flame. He has that Electric Eel, which is getting more and more interesting because Electric Eel for two red, you can give it plus two, plus oh, and you can do that multiple times. So he actually with the two Sisters of the Flame and uh, the Mountain of Stone, he has four red and he can make it a 5-1. Let's see what I can do here. So I've got two Ghost Ships, right? Because the Dance of Many is a Ghost Ship and I've got a Fire Drake. So I've got my whole Air Force assembled. Attacking with my Dance of Many token here. Remember, Peter is still on 17. He's got time enough. Deciding to chump block here, so not taking any damage. And there, this is interesting, playing a War Barge. A War Barge is a card that came from my sideboard, 40 cast, I believe, two, and you can give target creature Island Walk. So it's, it's pretty good. And of course, my opponent, Peter, has islands, so I can make my ships unblockable, which is which is not really relevant at the moment because he doesn't have any flyers anymore, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty good card. And look at that, an all-out attack here by Peter. And interestingly enough, also with that Sisters of the Flame, I think, I think I wouldn't have done it. I would have kept the Sisters of the Flame at bay to kind of bump my Electric Eel, maybe only attack with the Electric Eel and um, uh, Goblins of the Flark. Goblins of the Flark, of course, still has Mountain Walk. Um, so that would deal with damage and he can then trade an electric eel for one of my flyers probably my fire drake now let's take a look how am I going to block probably fire drake on electric eel and ghost ship on goblin rock sled or maybe sisters of the flame yeah exactly so goblin rock sled is being blocked here so it's a 3-1 right and it's going to get killed by the ghost ship and then I'm kind of forcing him to pump because with the electric eel, when you pump it, you do take a damage. So we kind of see Peter here taking a damage, going to 16, but I'm also taking damage here. I'm on seven right now. That's not a lot. I'm, I'm quite low here. Being stuck on seven. Oh, there is a bull lightning. Am I going to attack with everything? Probably not. I need... To I need my ghost ships to kind of protect myself here. So just attacking with the bull lightning, probably going to hit him for six or is he going to block with his sisters of the flame? No, he's just going to take the damage. I think that's a good decision. It's going to go down to 10 here. And can he find something to kind of get out of this? Bull lightning would really help. 
I mean, remember, I am on seven, I'm pretty low. So if you can just find at least the bull lightning forcing me to basically block it with a ghost ship. Okay, this helps to finding a ghost ship. That is actually pretty good. It's 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 a two four blocker and of course, of course I can use my war barge, but it's also not a creature on the board. I mean, I'm really low and I kind of feel really lucky here that that peter doesn't realize that his governments of the flock has as mountain walk um i've i this kind of reminds me of a game i played with my suicide blue deck where i played lord of atlantis and merfolk of the pearl trident and i was playing against a blue black player um and for some reason i had lord of atlantis and merfolk of the pearl trident so i had a 2-2 merfolk with island walk and i didn't attack i didn't see it i just didn't attack so and look at this i'm actually just passing the turn so this is really good news for peter it looks like uh, it, the situation is kind of stabilized. Well, oh wait, I did play a Fountain of Youth, which is not great for for uh, for Peter because Fountain of Youth zero to cast. You can pay two and tap it to just gain one life, so I can slowly tick up my life total again. And that is the last thing that uh, Peter wants to see here because the fact that I'm so low, that's the main thing that he's got going for himself. Tapping three here, another Sisters of the Flame. And is he tapping? Is he doing something else? Yes, no, yes. Paying. Looks like he's kind of in tank. Okay, playing a Blood Moon. And again, it's not very useful with the current board state. Is there another bull? There is another bull lightning. Ay, 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 ay. And he cannot. He tapped his islands, so he's unable to block and regenerate. Blocking with a Sisters of the Flame, taking two damage, or, or oh, four damage, of course, uh, going down to six. And tapping, oh, there's a Diabolic Machine, yeah. I think it's really cool, Peter, that you're playing this card. It's such a sweet card, and it's actually a problem for me. Because it's a 4-4. Four, four. It can kill my ships. I don't have any blue mana to regenerate. I'm on 8. Uh, it, it, this could be a game changer. Remember, Diabolic Machine also has regeneration. So he can attack and I can block out on 2 ships. And he doesn't care. He can just regenerate it. There is a Brothers of Fire from my side. Wow, wow, wow. This is kind of interesting, this game. I'm on 8. He's on 6. Remember, Brothers of Fire pay two red and one and deal one damage to any target, but also one damage to yourself. So I'm really low on life. So it's going to be tough for me to use the Brothers of Fire. At least it's another body on the ground, I guess. Wow, this is interesting. I would attack with the Diabolic Machine, no questions asked. I would just go for it. He can regenerate it anyway. Wow, what can I do? And look at that, blocking on my token, at least that means I get two free islands next turn, that's something. But this is, I mean, this is great for, for Peter, he just killed a ghost ship for, for nothing, like, it was free, you know? Let's see what he can do here, or what I can do, I should say. Am I just passing turn? At least I can activate Brothers of Fire twice, but remember, that would mean I'm going down to six. I'm just passing turn. Oh, wow. There, oh, there's a Fisher. Okay, wow, wow, wow. There is a Fisher on the Diabolic Machine. Remember, Fisher says buried, so he cannot regenerate. Oh, wow, this is pretty brutal. I guess I needed that extra mana um, that, that was kind of used for the upkeep of Dance of Many to cast the Fisher. So, wow, wow, wow. It was looking really, really good for you, Peter, but now it's going south again. You really needed that Diabolic Machine. But we're not there yet. I'm on eight. If you can do a full, like an Alpha Strike next turn, again, I'm doing nothing. Do I have another Fisher in hand? Remember, Fisher is an instant, so I can kind of do that annoying thing of just passing turn and then just do something in my opponent's turn. And I think Peter is, is is thinking that now as well. Does he have another another Fisher in hand?
and he's just passing turn which is great news for me and now i'm using this this combo in my deck <laughs> yeah combo time where i activate my brothers of fire to deal a damage to him and to myself but i've got a fountain of youth so i'm gaining a life so basically i stay at the same life a uh, total life level so that is uh yeah that's i just, i enjoy little synergies like that anyway i'm playing a fire drake here passing turn And there is another ghost ship. And that's, again, that's pretty good, actually, for Peter. And But now I'm slowly picking him down. He's already on four. I'm going to go down to seven. But, I mean, he can do an alpha strike next turn. This is, this is not over yet. What an interesting second game this is. And I have to say... I remember now playing this game and being kind of tempted, wanting to say to Peter, Peter, your Godmas the Flock is Mountain Walk, but I also want to win. Uh, I was kind of torn, you know, what to do. Let me know in the comments below what you would have done. Um, and I think, oh, I'm giving it Island Walk, of course. I forgot all about that. Using my War Barge to give my creatures Island Walk and then walk all over him and finish this game number two. Wow. Winning this one, I think, I think, you know, I was just discussing the Goblins of the Flark situation. Let me know in the comments below what you've told your opponent about the Goblins of the Flark. I kind of, like, Peter's a really nice guy and I recognize these moments in Magic where you just forget it. You're so in the game, you don't see these obvious things. I had it not too long ago where I had a Circle of Protection Artifacts and I got killed by Mishra's Factory. I mean, that's an artifact creature. I didn't use my circle of protection. So, <laughs> but I mean, I guess I didn't, I didn't tell him, uh, yes, I want to win. But I also think it is, it is part of magic. I think it's part of the game. Um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, that's my opinion. I do think it's different when you can't see the cards of your opponent properly, for example. You need to see that properly. I also think it's something else is if you make a play mistake like I did in game one where I attack with my Dance of Many token, I just cannot do that. It is summoning sickness. So I think those are like different things, you know, that has nothing to do with, uh, with game knowledge. Well, it does, but not, you know what I mean, with knowledge of the cards themselves. Anyway, oh, what a thriller this game number two was. Let's uh, let's quickly go to game number three. Because remember, in the tournament uh, that we're playing, every game win counts. So Peter can still get a point from this. I've got two points so far. Let's go to game three. Game number three. Here we go. So I've won the prior two games. So I guess it's Peter on the play again. Let's see if we keep our opening seven. It looks like we do. There's a mountain, not a one drop this time. Mountain from me as well. And there is a Felber Stone. So some ramping. So next turn, if he can find a mountain, he can actually cast a Bull Lightning. Another mountain passing turn here. There is mountain number three. Will we see a Bull Lightning? Or a Ghost Ship would be good too. There is a Sisters of the Flame and a Goblins of the Flark. Again, the Goblins of the Flark. And there is a Brothers of Fire. That is bad news for that little goblin. Probably going to be roasted next turn. And what is Peter going to do here? And yeah, he's attacking. And oh, this is interesting. I'm blocking the Sisters of the Flame. That is... Okay, I'm really surprised about that decision. Really surprised. Maybe, okay, I have a second in hand, but still, I mean, I think I shouldn't have done that. Okay, anyway, I'm on 19. Past turn here. And let's see, what is he going to do? Another island. And we can see his cards a little bit there. Eternal Flame maybe came came in from the sideboard. I think it was an Eternal Flame and 
maybe asking about my card count here attacking so i'm gonna drop to 18. and i guess now he's found out it has mountain walk and he's he's stamping all over me oh this is kind of rough oh look at that dance of many bull lightning this is a play that i want to do hitting peter here for 14 damage ah yeah yeah he's on six wow with the brothers of fire that i can basically use for direct damage as well there's a fire drake from peter the following turn putting me on 17. i things are not looking good for peter here that means i could get a 3-0 victory and that's gonna help me a long way in my quest to get into the top eight here am i tapping six is there an amnesia amnesia oh man i think the game's over now i think the game's over now oh wow 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 look at that that's a pretty good hand actually oh wow eternal flame inferno and dance of many are all gone because of that amnesia empty-handed i mean i've got this pretty much in the bag attacking him now he's gonna go down to four he's probably gonna at least attack with one right gonna go down to 16 here untapping and there we go another mountain Tangle kelping it, attacking, and then killing him. Yeah, yeah. So I'm dealing two damage first, and then I'm activating the Brothers of Fire to to kill him for those final two life points. This was just wow. Sometimes you're you're playing these games and your deck, it just it's everything is coming together. I mean, if this would have happened uh, more often, <laughs> you know, I uh, yeah, I would have would have ended up um, yeah, I would have had a much better results in the tournament let me put it that way i don't want to give away any spoilers so i don't want to say too much about that uh okay first of all i would love uh to thank you for watching another episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and i would also like to thank peter of course for playing the game with me for letting me record it and letting me feature it right here on timmy talks thank you very much for that uh, it was a fun match. It was enjoyable to play against you. I think that game two was a real, real nail biter. That was really the game of this episode. If you if you ask me, it was it was so close, and and there were so many little components and interactions going on in that uh, game number two. So very, very enjoyable. Um, so if you would like to help the channel, if you like this content, and you would like to help me grow and you know keep the channel alive you can do that very simply by leaving a like leaving a comment subscribing to timmy talks if you're not a sub yet and something else that you can do um and that peter is already doing you can become a patron of the show by visiting my patreon page there's probably a link popping up right now click on there and an info card i should say click on the info card and that will take you to timmy talks patreon page uh, and there you can find out how you can sponsor the show it already starts with one dollar and you can actually join crazy tournaments like this uh thank you for watching uh let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic channel members and patrons of timmy talks Ich kann das Ding, das Samba gesehen.